Here in Mexico, it is one of the worst places on earth to be a journalist. More than ever before, journalists are getting murdered, kidnapped, physically and verbally abused. Journalists still be murdered in Mexico because the government doesn't, doesn't care. Speaking the truth can put your life at risk. The government is lying about all this, and I can prove that. The issue here is a suppression of freedom of expression and free and independent media. So I'm here in Mexico to understand what's happening. Marcela Sandejas is a human rights activist who worked for Article 19, an NGO dedicated to protecting journalists and freedom of speech around the world. What's happening to journalists here in Mexico? Independent, free-minded journalists are being attacked, and they've been attacked in several ways. They've been harassed, threatened, killed, and even disappeared. These are not numbers, these are human lives. And I've come to know the families of people that are still looking for their loved ones because they were journalists or human rights defenders or even normal citizens. Contrary to what most people will think, just 2% of these cases are perpetrated by the organized crime. Almost 50% of the rest of those cases are perpetrated by public officials. With every aggression, the government sends a message to all of us. What was the message? The message is that we are not safe, that it is that you pay a very high price if you want to fight in favor of freedom of speech. And in favor of freedom, there is a high price to pay. Annabel Hernandez is an award-winning investigative journalist. She has become a target for exposing the connections between Mexico's drug cartels and corrupt government officials. She's accompanied by security 24-7. Annabel, you've been a journalist for more than 20 years here in Mexico. Do you think this is one of the worst times for journalists in terms of attacks? Well, as you well know, more than 110 journalists have been murdered in, in Mexico in the, last, in the last 10 years. But it's not just that someone came and shoot you. This is the easy part. Mm -hmm. Most of these journalists have been brutally tortured. Many of them were tortured, raped, cut in pieces, and put the bodies in garbage um, bags. Uh, it's like a performance of the horror to just to try to stop to the journalist to don't do the job. You have personally received a lot of attacks. Can you tell me more about that? When I was noticed by one source that these policemen were organizing the plan to kill me, I really didn't want to take that seriously. Mm -hmm. But um, very soon I discovered that the plan was real. Uh, my family started to be attacked. Some of my sources uh, were murdered or disappeared. A uh, gunman get inside to my house, 11, 11 federal police. I, I wrote a book on 2010, Los Señores del Narco, Narcoland in English. This book talk about the connections between the government and the Sinaloa cartel. In this book, I put all the names of the people that works in the government that had connections with the cartel. So when I published the book, I was ready for threats and these kind of things. But what I, what I never expect is that the biggest threat will came from the government, not from the cartels. Why? In Mexico right now, it's more dangerous to talk about the corruption of the government, the connections of the government with the cartels and the cartels, because El Chapo Guzman, Los Zetas, they don't care. They, they almost like that the journalists talk about them. The problem is the other side, and these both sides are together working every day. Six hours northwest of Mexico City in Salao, once recognized as a tourist area, it was here a savage attack against a 23-year-old journalist would rally activists, lawyers, and journalists to finally take a stand. 
When Carla accepted a job to work as a journalist, she never thought this will end up jeopardizing her life. I'm here to meet her to understand what happened. Hi, Carla. How are you? Hola. Hola. Bien. Bien. Thank you for having me. So, how long were you working as a journalist when the attack happened? Tenía un año. What kind of stories were you covering? Denuncia social eh, sobre falta de, de apoyos eh, a la gente, infraestructura, inseguridad. What happened the day of the attack? Estaba hablando con mi jefe. De repente entran eh, tres sujetos. Eh, estaba con mi compañera, nos amenazan. Uno pregunta en mi nombre, me levanto y comienza a golpearme. Carla was hospitalized for brain swelling and her eyesight was severely damaged. She was bedridden for a month and a half, recovering from the brutal beating. Did they tell you anything as they were attacking you? Me decían, bájale de huevos a tus, a tus notas. Querían que me callara, que dejara de escribir, pero pues el mensaje era muy claro y yo supe de dónde venía. Esto es varias semanas después. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The three men who savagely beat Carla were arrested, but investigators discovered the mayor and the chief of police ordered the attack. In a major victory for the fight against political corruption in Mexico, Carla's case led to the arrest and conviction of both the mayor and the chief of police. Tell me more about the verdict. Veíamos muy difícil lograr que un expresidente municipal estuviera en la cárcel. El que las autoridades, los presidentes municipales sientan que va a haber justicia, que las personas no nos quedaremos de brazos cruzados. Es que ningún otro presidente municipal, ninguna otra autoridad se le ocurra, ni siquiera intente volver a violentar a algún otro periodista. Carla's case made headlines because 90% of attacks and murders of journalists are never brought to trial. Laura Barboya worked as a special prosecutor for crimes against freedom of expression, a division of the Attorney General's office to deal with cases of violence against the press in Mexico. Why so many journalists are being attacked here in Mexico? Bueno, hay amenazas de particulares porque se tocan intereses y entonces cuando el periodista dice lo que alguien no quiere decir, pues es muy susceptible a, a, a recibir una agresión o una amenaza. I want to clarify, what do you mean when, when you say journalists don't understand that they put themselves at risk when they report on something? Part of their job is to report on what's happening in their state or anywhere. So why is there a risk? when reporting on whatever they are reporting on. Es porque no 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 tenían la posibilidad de irlo midiendo o de ir analizando también otras cuestiones de contexto. I interviewed the former head of the special prosecutor's office yeah. assigned by the government and she said part of the blame is on the journalists. They need to know what to cover and what not to cover. That's a risk of what they cover. How do you answer? That's cynical. How can the government can say that? That's they, of what course, she said. With, 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 with this declaration, of course, she's saying that in Mexico doesn't exist freedom of express. That, 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 more that, or that, less. That, that is a confession. You don't need more. The government is claiming they're having safe houses for journalists. They're having the special prosecutor's office for journalists. Do you think they're doing enough? The government is lying about all this. And I can prove that. When the international community start to be worried about what is happening in Mexico with all these journalists, the government decide to create a masquerade. So what they decide is, yes, in Mexico, we, if you see, we have one very strong law that supposedly protects the journalists. But nothing of that stop the murder of the journalists. This is the first and most important sign that all this is a big lie. How is possible that even the law, even all the officials that supposedly protect journalists, even all the money, journalists still be murdered in Mexico? Because the government doesn't, doesn't care. Because with one hand, simulate to protect journalists, but with the other hand, let that the, that the killers do whatever they want to. How 
has your life changed since the attack? Es difícil. Porque sinceramente desde ese día yo tengo mucho miedo, no sé qué va a pasar el día que los policías que me acompañan se vayan, no sé qué va a pasar con mi familia, no sé si voy a poder trabajar como lo he hecho hasta ahorita. Tengo miedo. Estoy convencida de que la sociedad nos necesita y por eso es que estoy aquí. Absolutely. Journalists are for me a pillar of democracy and of any society. A pillar. Carla's case is proof that you do not need money or power to speak truth to power. She was only 23 year old journalist when she was attacked and beaten up. And the purpose of that was to silence her. Yet she stood up, raised a case against not only those who beat her up, but those who ordered the attack. It gives me hope to see a young woman like her, a young journalist like her, standing up to her truth Despite all odds, the story continues, but Carla and many journalists like her are still here. That's the hope. You keep on reporting and you keep on going. What gives you hope and believe to keep on going? I really believe that good journalism can change the world. Authentic, free journalists in one country like Mexico really can help to resolve our deep problems. I really think that the government will not, will not inform accurate to the people. The cartels, neither. I think that the only way to be able to make free the society with information is through journalists. The journalists I met here in Mexico are living in fear. Their friends have been killed. They have been beaten up and tortured. They have bodyguards. And this is just for reporting on any subject. Their protection is not only a Mexican issue, it is a global issue. The story continues.